Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. I'm Will, and I'm joined by my co-host over here, the Grease. Say hello, Grease. Post-nap Grease, signing on, Will. You've been doing a lot of sleeping during the daytime I of have. Late. I slept at the office the other day in a very comfortable recliner in a theater. Did someone find you, or did you just wake up? No, I just woke up. Yeah, I came out you know, there. I had to brag a little bit. Well, you know, people were looking for you for like two hours. That's not true. I, uh, I was not in there for two hours. All right. Well, it, well it hour, an hour and, and half. 15. <laughs> okay. An hour and 15. All I know is that everyone kept asking for you. And I'm like, well, his lights are on. He normally doesn't leave without turning his lights off because he's right. a little responsible, a little green. And there's my keys on the counter. The keys are there. And people even went to see if your car was in the parking lot. They, are you serious? 100%. <laughs> I had my phone. Uh, I think they tried calling you because I know I did. I definitely tried calling you because I had something to tell you and you weren't around. So. Well, that's why I told everybody because next time you'll know what to do. Yeah, you'll most know where people to go. don't think that uh, people sleeping on the job, literally. Hey, I just poured up a, a sample. This is from our buddy Chris P. Oh, you are sharing something. He from sent, him. sent a bunch and I drank one on the town hall couple of weeks back. And if you want to be a part of Town Hall, go to uh, patreon.com slash the podcast. Uh, we're doing them a lot more frequently, including tonight. There's one right after the show tonight. So good little hang, some whiskey friends. We talk about whiskey. We talk about fast I, food. I drank something incredible he sent, and I don't remember what it was. It was Little Book. Oh, yeah. That one was real good. It was real good. What, this, what um, release was it again? Three? No. Whatever the latest, the most recent. Batch four? Ten? Seven? I don't remember. Little. Ten. It may have been Little Book Seven. This is Bardstown Foursquare collab. It's 107 proof. So this is uh, this is Bardstown Bourbon Company then aged in Foursquare rum barrels. I know you're on kind of a rum kick. So I am I on a rum I kick. I thought you'd like to taste it. I taste do like, the sweetness. I do like rum again, but I have to I have to say this one thing really quick. I doubt it. About Bardstown. When do they not collab? It's mostly what they do. Right. Well, except, Which for, is except fun. for with the podcast. Yeah, we tried that one time and didn't end up too well. Wow. So for them, <laughs> jokes on them. They're doing they made, just fine. They well. made two hundred enemies that <laughs> night. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. 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 Oh, this smells great. I wish I hate didn't hate them. I don't hate them well. Yeah. But I don't hate a lot of things or that you do. What did I do? Yeah, like I like hot dogs. I like hot dogs. I just don't eat them seven nights a week. Well. Average of seven nights. <sighs> I mean, some weeks eat them more than twice a night. Also accurate. Yeah. Hey, I've been making this thing I saw on um, Instagram. I think it's technically a TikTok thing. But, uh, you know, I don't let the CCP spy on my data. Oh, right. Because I keep it on the up and up. Uh, but <laughs> it's, it's on Instagram. <laughs> and I say it's called uh, a chickle. And what you do is the greatest thing ever happened to me personally. You take shredded cheese and, and you take a like, nonstick skillet, right? Yeah. And you, you just kind of lay like a square of shredded cheese. Yeah, you did it. this the other day, and it looked delicious. It's incredible. And so then you let that start to get crispy, and you just watch it bubble. Watching cheese bubble is one of my favorite things. And it just starts like to well bubble. like Will in the sun on the beach. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a cheesy bubble. <laughs> and you just watch it bubble, and it gets crispy around the edges. Then you take a, a pickle spear, kosher dill, if you will, and then you place it on it, and then you wrap it over, and it makes a crispy cheese shell around your pickle and you can even sprinkle some bacon in yeah, there yeah i was about to say you just can dip that in some ranch bacon in that. you can do or a kanaka sausage kanaka kanaka would be from uh, canada kanaka's from alabama two different things <laughs> oh, very man. close to a each andrew other. west he's what i call a kanaka sausage Can kanaka 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 is from alabama he's right from great white north it, do that? Does Alabama people know how closely related they are to something Canadian? I feel like they would get upset. <laughs> no, I think it's more of an Indian name. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it's Kaneka County. Not well versed. No, sure, in anything, <laughs> <laughs> in literally anything. Not well versed. Well, I mean, I do come from Northeast Georgia, where the Cherokee Indians were around, and there's Indian mounds out there. Oh, yeah, Indian mounds fascinate me. Yeah, I don't know what. I don't necessarily know what they do. We used them for sledding. <laughs> so Grease is desecrating Indian burial grounds. Well, 
Hey, watch how fast I can go on these bones. Yeah. Yeah. Grease is not yeah. um this steep. Not, not a, a it's a good uh, it's a good hang. It's a, it's a good hang. <laughs> There's some Indian mounds on the Natchez Trace as you're heading to Mississippi and they're like from literally like eight hundred AD. Like that's how old they are. They're thousands of years yeah, old. Yeah, that's crazy. People built them things. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm just surprised people could build anything that long ago. Well, they built the pyramids a lot longer than that. Yeah. God, how long did that take? They didn't have like cranes. Well, that so there's some um there's some theories. <laughs> oh, the aliens? <laughs> well, there's some people say aliens, but then there's also like theories about like technology that was lost to some so, in some way. It was like an EMP. Like they had I don't know, but they had a technology that where they were able to build something like that, that I don't think we could build that today. Like, I don't think the engineers could build what they built with those Tools. stones and everything. They couldn't do it. So there's something, there's something we don't have. Like maybe they we have were, too many white collar people I that wouldn't this, show up. I think this may be something I heard on Joe Rogan or something, or, or something adjacent. That's like, uh, I'm a businessman. Okay. I don't roll boulders well, it also on was, tree logs <laughs> they also used enslaved israelites so that also isn't the greatest way to accomplish your goals right so yeah egyptians we're looking at you not cool yeah no that yeah. was not cool i'm gonna stop right there because i'm gonna say something oh yeah yeah all of a sudden i'm like i'm leading him down a path i shouldn't be leading him down so yeah, uh, you start talking about nationalities and people groups and there's only one way to go for yeah. me, and it's it's not a good way. Not a good look, Grease. My heart is right, but my words will slip up and cause me problems. We all know this, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, we've known it for a real long time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you hear yeah. about uh, speaking of international culture and people groups? Yeah. Have you heard about Jack Daniels getting in trouble about an ad? No. Yeah, they got in trouble with an ad. And like the ad got mad at them? That's how they got in trouble with them. Yeah. So, so it's talking about like shorter days means we, we, all right, see, I'll just read it to you. Uh, please do. The ad displayed at a London tube station in November. You, know what, a, a, you know what a tube station is? I have is? no idea. Is that the tunnels under the water? No, it's their subway. They call them the tubes. Okay. Well, I was super close. Yeah, you were. That was pretty I mean, close. yeah. I mean, the channel does go under the water, but they the call tubes. it a channel. The channel is the underground tunnel that goes across the English Channel. So it goes from England to France. Oh, okay. And it's called the channel. I thought the channel was between. No, don't you know, even. Where are you going? <laughs> like, you know, your back. <laughs> I know. Okay. That's what I thought. Uh huh. Yeah. I thought that Dad was. Dad got Grease's Urban Dictionary over mm. here. What is a channel? Um, <laughs> uh, it depicted a group of young people sitting around a table, I guess, on the, the tube. Okay. And the text read, shorter days mean we can skip to the good part. Okay. Although the ad, ad featured text that read, remember the good parts, please drink responsibly. A complaint to the organization claimed the advertisement was encouraging irresponsible alcohol consumption. Oh, like as you black out your day shorter? <laughs> the complaint against the ad claimed the language like the word skip encouraged individuals <clears throat> to drink earlier Due to reduced daylight hours. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> First of all, the so, Brits, I don't think they need any encouragement when it comes to drinking a lot. I think they're pretty much known for it. Right. I guess we need to attack uh, 5 o'clock somewhere. I, I mean, mean, I'm it, sure someone did. <laughs> okay, that is very fair. May he rest in peace. Yeah. Jack Daniels, good on you. I agree. I, I think we can... There's a lot of things we could skip to the good parts. Yeah, I, you know? I don't have a problem with the ad. I didn't read it as, hey, go get blackout drunk at 4 p.m. Right, so you don't have right. To, so you don't have to have the rest of your day. Right. But um, I mean, happy hours. Like right. I feel like happy hours in their nature yeah. are saying, hey, before you go home to those kids, yeah, why don't you saunter on over here and have a two for one? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Saunter up to the bar. It's like they're they're begging you to do <laughs> Skip that. Skip to the good bar. <laughs> like not only are we going to tell you to have that drink before you go home to your kids, yeah, we're going to let you have two for Same the price. price of one. For the price of one. Oh man, I never liked the people that the the bars that would give you the chip for the two for one that you could take with you and use it later. I'm like, no. 
just make me drink both of them. Like, well, just let's sit here. Let's let's not make this a thing. Just I like give the me idea, them both. Because you, if if they just br- in college, they would just bring you two and sit it on the table. Yeah, I and know. then it would get warm and whatever. Also, they can't just remember. They can't tabulate it in the computer. And be like, oh, this is their. Second. I feel like there could be a definite fraud scheme with those two if you could take that chip with you. Yeah, if you got a you 3D know, printer, you can just make about anything. You can make oh, those two for, for one sure. Chips. For sure. I mean, the consistency might be. Well, I don't know. Maybe get some balsa wood and just chisel it. I mean, I guess Casino has been doing it for a while with those chips. Do they put like a microchip in them? In what? In those chips. At the bar or at the casino? At the casino. I don't know. You are much more well versed in casino tech. I just want to know that, like, when you sl- slide it over the bonus thing, how the bonus light comes on. Oh, how's it do it? Right. Because I'll put my hand over it all day long. Mm-hmm. There's a daggum chip in there. Probably. That's how they know it's legit. It's okay. like it's like Top Golf. It's the same Top Golf technology, but in a, in a poker chip. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, Top Golf's been doing it for years. <laughs> okay, well, casinos have been. Doing, is that the joke? Is that what <laughs> yes, you? <laughs> yeah, Top Golf's been doing it okay. for years, Grease. This ain't nothing new. Mm-hmm. Casinos didn't happen upon some chips, dude. A chip and a chip. That's a two for one right there. You know what I mean. <sighs> I wonder, microchip what, I wonder what Bobo chip. Hogan would say about that. Bobo Hogan doesn't go to uh, legitimate casinos. I don't think he that. only goes to underground <laughs> casinos. His casinos don't have any technology except for a 45 pointed at you if you're cheating. Yeah, yeah, and there's <laughs> there's a third-party fighting involved. Oh, it, but not a human. Maybe no. a human. Sometimes human. Most of the time, animal. Yeah. If yeah. If... If there were no, uh, this is going to get me in trouble, probably. If there were no moral issues with animal fighting, oh, that's no, awful. I, no, 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 I'm I just saying. No, let me get to the actual question. That's the presupposition. Okay. There's no moral issues. It's not frowned upon. Which animals would you most want to bet on? Ants. 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 That's it. I think you can actually get away with that. And bees. I don't know. No, let's do actual animal, not bugs. Well, I like other animals. No, I'm saying I'm taking out the morality question. Crap here. that bites me. Okay, spiders. Those are bugs still. You're talking about an arachnid. Well, that's, but that's, those aren't animal. Ants and spiders. It has to have four legs. Well, no, like one's like six and like one's like eight. I'm, I'm not, I know that's what I'm not talking about. I'm telling you it has to have four legs. Basically like welter and heavy. <laughs> Like they got different class. I know. So non insect. Non insect? Yeah. Animal. Uh okay. Uh yes. Um I mean sharks for sure. Oh, shark fighting. They can good. they can battle that out. Oh, and squid. Sharks and squid facing off. Okay, so you want an aquatic fight. I want there needs to be a large tank built. I want this. things that I am scared of to kill each other. Okay, like bears. I know how to, at least bears are in my environment. Yeah. And I know that you're supposed to be like, like get real big. So there's a chance. There's no chance for me to survive against a I shark or a squid. I thought you're supposed to get squid. real small. I thought you're supposed to get real small if a bear. No, because they think you're like a little chew toy. You got to get super big. You got to pretend like you're bigger than them and like you're ready to throw down. And they like, oh, okay. We need to test this theory. We're going to find us a bear. It's and we're online. Do one of each. It's online. But right. so no, you're I, still sticking aquatic. Yeah, because I think the ocean is already just this big old pool of blood anyway. Yeah. It's just a violent place. It's pretty violent. So I can get behind that. It would be interesting is like, you know, the. I love that I give you a hypothetical and I, I'm a, like a genius. I come up with the one hypothetical that you have like, Depth like, on icky feelings about you're like oh, I don't want to I don't want animals to fight no I don't and I'm taking I took the veil of morality and and emotion off of it for you I gave you permission to be weird and you couldn't do it I can't do it that's a, man it makes me yeah I don't like it when the whole Mike Vick thing came out I got crushed because I I was a Falcons fan and I don't like that yeah. Now, now I will say, at one point in my life, I was around cockfighting a good bit. Yeah, you can still go see cockfighting in Puerto Rico. 
Oh, I'm sure. I'm no, sure. like they have arenas. It's not like it's not on the outskirts. It's, it's like you go buy a ticket. That's an American territory, right? It's also like their national sport. <laughs> I guess the I guess American couldn't be like. I think uh, they tried to shut we it. We took down. their island. We probably should leave their national sport. I think they have tried to shut it down multiple times, but it keeps coming back. Yeah, I mean, well, how don't are they? Mess with them. How are they going to shut that down? Yeah, I mean, legitimately, you're going to send a hundred thousand forces there to just I'd like sit to, there and wait. Well, I mean, for a already, generation to die out. They also they already have a military base. They don't have to send forces. Well, they don't have a hundred thousand people there. I don't know how many they've got working on that base. They got they got them underground too, probably with the ants. Yeah, I know for a fact our military numbers are not accurate. I'd like to see a couple foxes fight. I was waiting for you to ask me, but fox with them tails. Yeah, I, I want to see some. I like fly. foxes. I don't want squirrels to fight. Sometimes it feels like that. Skunk in my stomach. fight. Skunk fight. Okay, would be skunks intense. actually could be decent. It's got to have an intense plexi, like encapsulation. Because they're going to be spraying the whole time. I will say this. I'm cool with snakes fighting, for sure, because Snake I want fight. them all to die. Yeah. So I saw this video the other day of this daggum iguana thing or whatever trying to, and Snoop Dogg was commentating. You've seen that video, yeah. right? He's trying to get away, and all these snakes just come out of these rocks like it's freaking apocalypse. Yeah, that was from uh, one of those Earth Planet Earth series. Right. And you can watch and, that in 4K on. <laughs> and I was pulling for that iguana like, very passionately in my head. Yeah. I was like, don't you do it, you stupid snakes. And do, you to, do you want to go on an iguana hunt uh, in Florida? <sighs> I mean, I'm cool with hunting. Yeah. Well, they're an invasive species. Yeah. They're not supposed to be there. Ana, like anacondas. Well, Burmese python is what you're Pythons, thinking. Pythons, sure. yeah. Anaconda. I don't think they have got wild anacondas in Florida. <laughs> no. Anacondas are the big ones. They are a big snake. Yeah, they're not in and Brazil. Are they in Brazil? Uh, yeah, the Amazon, I think. Yeah, wherever we that should, is. But isn't that invasive? No, anacondas aren't invasive. No, not. Well, then where why they are live. there movies about them? No, they just live there. They're in like natural down there. Oh, okay, well, there's no wild anacondas. People don't have anacondas as pets and release them in the Everglades and they take over. That you're thinking of Burmese pythons. I don't, and they're nasty. There's a guy I watch. Don't, don't you get Python. paid for everyone you kill? They have like a, a yearly hunt where you can go and you can get paid. And then there's this, um, I think it's called Python Cowboy or something. It's an account I follow on Instagram. Uh -huh. But it's a guy that has a guide service to go hunting iguana and, and the snakes. And also some wild hogs that are invasive. And it oh, is. Oh, I have seen the hog thing. They get they helicopters. Are, yeah, there's some intense videos that this guy puts out and he takes people hunting and you can get like snake then he has like a side business like after you kill you can like turn it to a wallet <laughs> oh. some snake skin boots yeah he made hey man we got your picture what are those snake, uh, $40. what are those shoes james wears the, the like real cool dad shoes the those pink what are they cowboy called? boots no 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 they're like foam they're kind of like crocs no but they're not crocs they're the other ones that have like canvas on them Hey dudes! Oh, hey dudes! Hey dudes! He I've makes never... he makes some custom hey dudes with with python skin in on them. Oh, I'm like, I mean, I don't know if I'd wear hey dudes, but I'd probably wear them if they had python skin. Okay, yeah. Anyhow, all that to say, I want to go on that, but there's some intense stuff going on. Yeah, the hog hunting stuff videos are crazy. Like they have like full on machine guns from helicopter. I gotta show you these snakes. This guy fighting these snakes. Snakes. They're like twenty feet long snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Yeah, that's um, that's from Indiana Jones. It is, it is, it is. Um, and I agree. But yeah, I mean, it's 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 pretty wild to watch. Yeah, I'll show I'm you some after it. the show. All right, what whiskey would you do while hunting anaconda? Oh, wild turkey, hundred percent. Anaconda? No, Burmese Python. pythons. Yeah. Why are they called Burmese? Burmese. That's the varietal. There's, there's more than one kind of python. There's ball python. Oh, that's right. Burmese python. Those are the only two I know because that's the kind you can get at the pet store. I had a buddy that had a Burmese python um, when we were little. 
and by little, I mean like middle school and when it was, cause they don't eat that often. They eat like only like once every couple of weeks and then they'd, uh, right. Yeah. But and I mean, so like, when, like large cat, when it was feeding night, he'd invite people to come spend the night and they would drop a rat in there. And we would just sit around for hours watching, waiting, waiting for it to happen, waiting for the kill. So it's not, it doesn't happen quickly. No, because he may not be hungry quite yet. So you just drop Does it he in toy there. With it too? And we have we have some surge, a bunch of like gusher snacks, uh-huh. pizza, and we would just sit around like eight dudes, middle school dudes, just chilling, waiting for this snake to strike. And finally he would. See, I'll be playing then, Super Nintendo until you hear a squeal and you're like, It's happening. No, we didn't want to miss the strike. We're not waiting for the squeal. Okay, that's you're fair. sitting there and you want to see it all. And then you'd see it strike, you'd see it start constricting, and then you start eating, and it takes forever. There's a big old rat and just right. like slowly and then you go play video games. Yeah, because you And then you come back, there's just a tail hanging out, he's still trying to choke it down. So it's uh, it was it was quite a ride. That was interesting times. They had to get rid of that snake though because it bit his brother pretty bad. Mm. Yeah, it got to about eight feet. Did they release it? <sighs> Lord only knows. Probably Ugh. shouldn't have done that. It's because that they're personally they... connected. And they feel bad. They don't want to shoot it. Just I don't, shoot I don't it. think they know what to do. Just shoot it. Yeah, I don't know. They may have given it, sold it, sent it to a pet store, exotic animal trade. I want to. I, I, I would you, like to think that they just get out. Did I tell you the story? And they head to their mecca. when I was in Everglades. when I was in um, New Mexico for uh, when we were filming uh, yes. Jingle Smells. Yeah, I mean, I know you were there. I no, but I tell you the story when I went to a liquor store. No, I don't. All right, I'll tell the story. I don't real think quick. so. So I went to a liquor store just to you know peruse the uh, selection in New Mexico. It's when I hung out with our buddy Cause out in New Mexico. Yes, and. So I'm in there and I'm looking around. I got something for the room. Um, it's like a bottle of whiskey. Like I don't even remember what it was. It was just something fine to have in my hotel room because I was there for like a week. And um, I'm checking out, and the guy, the people in New Mexico, are they're a different, they're a different breed. They're just they're quirky, right? Built different. They're just quirky. So this guy's working at the liquor store, and he's like. And he'd been talking up a storm with this guy that was in there for 20 minutes and didn't buy anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but that's then, why he was talking to him. He's like, I, I feel like I'm going to get, I'm going to sell you. Yeah. So I get up there and he's like, Oh, good choice on like whatever I was buying. And it was probably like wild turkey. Like it legitimately right. was nothing special. And so I'm like, Oh, yeah, okay. And then <laughs> I gave him uh, my ID to look at and he goes, Tennessee. What are you doing in Albuquerque? <laughs> <laughs> and I go, oh. I mean, was he Jersey? Like, <laughs> No, he was just, he was like, wow. <laughs> and I go, uh, what are you doing in Albuquerque? What are you doing in Albuquerque? And I go, uh, I'm just out here for work. Like, I, you know me. I don't like to get into the details. No. I'm not looking to prolong this conversation. <laughs> right. I'm in the middle of transaction. Right. I don't need any more. And then he's like, oh, okay. Oh, man, bummer. You came all the way to Albuquerque. It's not even Balloon Fest. Oh, and I, go, I think you did and tell I go, me that. Oh, at least that. Yeah, because it's like their big hot air balloon festival. It's like, yeah. It sucks. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> and then he's like, he keeps going. And I'm wearing this hat. It's from uh, Duck Camp. It's a company. And they make like like hunting and fishing like I'm sure they gear. do gear and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I have this hat Where'd on. you go as a kid? Ah, duck camp. So it Woo! was it was a it's a white hat and it's just got it's like a rope hat. And it's uh, got an alligator on it. Oh. Oh. It's a pretty cool hat. Okay. And so, so not Okay. It says an alligator and then he goes, "So uh if you don't mind me asking, what kind of work you do?" <laughs> <laughs> and I go, "Well, I mean, I'm in production. Uh we're just out here you know, with, with some production stuff, and he, which is very big, and uh, there's like Netflix as a studio there. Oh, yeah, like that yeah. is probably the most common reason people go to Albuquerque. Yeah, it's kind of are, similar to Georgia, right? With the with the tax situation for the entertainment. Industry. Yeah, they have they have a lot of incentives to, and they have a lot of land. Yes. to build studios. So I just go. I'm in production. We're out here for a production, and he's like, "Oh, okay." Uh. He said, oh, no, it was before that. He goes, what's your hat? Uh-huh. And I said, oh, it's just this company, Duck Camp. And then he asked, well, what do you do? Uh-huh. 
And he goes, ah, oh, I didn't know if, you know, you were into exotic animals because of your hat. <laughs> He's always out there wheeling and dealing some alligators. <laughs> uh, here's the deal, dude. Which is probably not far-fetched for Albuquerque. Albuquerque people, they seem super nice. But, yeah, that's pretty quirky. Mm-hmm. Like, his thought was this guy's here. He has a hat that doesn't say, like, Jim Bob's exotic pets. Like, there's nothing oh, right. that makes it seem like it is nothing more than just a hat with but a But even then, you wouldn't assume that he's into somebody's into exotic animals. You would <laughs> ask, is your name Jim Bob? <laughs> yeah, or look at my ID then, that yeah. I put in front of him. And so literally, his logical leaps were that I'm here for work. I have an alligator on my hat. I must be an exotic animal dealer. Mm, and then yeah. I thought, that have I made fest. have I made the wrong life choices? Because if this man believed in me, maybe I could have been. Maybe I could have been exotic animal dealer. Yeah. Your dad does too. I've seen him. Sweet old man. He deals exotic animals? No, he believes in you. Oh, oh, that's fair. All right. Um you want to go to the fifteen? I would love to. What do you think of that four square first? That's pretty good. I mean, it's pretty good. It's lower proof, which I do really like. 107, yeah. Yeah, like four square for that proof. It's it's not overly rum. Wait, four square? The, sorry, the the Bardstown four square collab. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have like a, a punch in the mouth rum. Mm-hmm. So I think it's it's well done. I don't know what that costs. I think they're pretty pricey, but I mean. I don't know. I'd drink it. I don't know with this one if I would have pinpointed like rum finishing. Yeah, I mean it's just a it's a kiss of rum. Yeah, it's like a yeah, it's like it's just vanilla sweetness a yeah. lot. Yeah. A lot of it. It's good. But yeah, I mean it's there's nothing wrong with it at all. It's a good whiskey. Yeah, I think the lower proof kind of helped it not be as pungent. Pungent. A pungent though. All right, you want to go to the 15? I would love to, Will. Hit the music. Uh-oh. About to- about to nose vomit. My eyes are puffy. I have this, whatever that is. Beauty Mark, you ready? Yeah. And we're back from the 15th. Some say we never left, Will. All right. So I went to the liquor store. My brother in law was up in town and we uh, went to the liquor store. Oh, Bill? Bill? Yeah. Brother in law. My brother in Oh. I don't like you. Um, his splash whiskey. Dad, his dad's name is Bill. His- I was, it confused me. I'm like, I don't have a brother-in-law named Bill. Bow, Bill. So this is something that I saw on the shelf, and I like the label, and so I bought it because I judge books by their cover. Um, so this, it, you can do the same glass? Mm-hmm. All right. So this is called the Reverend Sour Mash Whiskey. Okay. It is a... Um, Supposed to be like a Tennessee style. It's a maple charcoal filtered, and it's named after the Reverend Daniel Houston Call. And if you've been to Jack Daniels or you know anything about Nearest Green, um, you'll know that the Reverend Call is who uh, owned the the Jack Daniels farm and what got one taught Nearest Green how to distill. And then That's also call, call whiskey. I'm pretty sure it's who Jack Daniels went to know that. work for. Uh, but he was a Lutheran pastor and he, the, the whole, there's like the whole story of it. And it looks like a page from the Bible, like the way it's structured. Oh, I like that. It's a pretty cool bottle. He looks cool too. Um, it's 90 proof, minimum of four year old, Kinda but Amish-y. it's produced and bottled in Wilkesboro, North Carolina. So it's North Carolina Tennessee whiskey. I don't. I mean, they I just don't call it. They call it sour mash whiskey. I don't have any issues with. North I don't either. Now the reason beyond the cool label, like that's just that, that speaks to me on many levels, um, was that it was only thirty five dollars. Uh huh. And so I'm like, that's worth giving a shot because there's packaging looks great. A lot of times, something like this, you'd think they're going to try to capitalize on a little bit of story, a little bit of marketing, and sell it for like 50 or 60 bucks. Right. But 
it was thirty five dollars. So I'm like, that's what. Oh, that's very fa- that's a good that's a good point because as far as the marketing and the story, there's yeah. a lot of work. It looks on like here. a sixty dollar bottle. They could just have put a QR code on there, and, and it would have taken you to. It's that. a proprietary, or at least maybe not proprietary, but not a commonly used bottle. It's it's very cylindrical and just very short neck. Um, and with sour bash whiskey, they leave some of the mash behind. <laughs> that's what they do, and then they. They put some more mash in there, and then when they pull that out, they leave some mash behind. It's just like a cyclical mash. Yeah, I get it. That first run can't be sour mash. Well, that's why they normally make a mash and throw that mash out. And start, and then the second mash is the mash they distill. Oh, I don't know if that's right. Um, all right, so this sounds is 30, wasteful. Thirty five dollars. I thought we'd give it a shot and and just see what we think. Because I'm not out a lot of money on that. It smells like pine. To me, it smells very Jack Danielsy. It doesn't smell. I'm, um, I'm getting a lot of pine, a lot of hay. I'm not getting hay. I'm getting like this the like a brute cologne, Stetson cologne. This is very manly. <laughs> brute Stetson. Like this is old dabble dabble. This this feels like a Lutheran pastor situation. <laughs> oh. Okay, I don't know. I don't. Okay, do you know what I'm talking about? Maybe this is a water to wine situation. It doesn't have the very youthful aroma to it. I don't get a lot of youth, You're even right. though it's only four years. Right. That tastes a lot better than I thought it would. Yeah, it's not complex. No, doesn't linger. But a good flavor on the palate. You know what? Especially coming out of the collaboration, Bardstown. Yeah. Foursquare. You know what I would say? And you can take this for what it's worth, pro or con. If someone were to say, tell me a smooth whiskey, something like this. Oh, this is not. What's the proof again? 90. This is your Basil Hayden's killer right here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's approachable. It has a good flavor, but it's not super lingering or intense. Um, it's not harsh. Whiskey at all. enthusiasts aren't going to love this. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. Yeah, I would. This is not a. I love that. That zero chance. But I will say for thirty five dollars, this you can drink. This. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. I even for thirty five dollars. I mean, I'm sure there's things cheaper, though. I would be interested in seeing it in a cocktail because it has a good whiskey flavor, Mm -hmm. but it's not like it's got all these left field tasting flavors and aromas coming out of it. Mm -hmm. So I would be curious just to see what experimenting with it does. I mean, you could have so many cocktails like the Reverend. Oh, yeah. Like altar call. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Collection basket. Right. Deaconator. Methodist, <laughs> Methodist, Lutheran, <laughs> right? Methodist. That's where you put methamphetamine in your whiskey. <laughs> it's the Methodist. <laughs> yeah, it's meth. The pharmacist, yeah, like yeah. combined. Yeah, yeah. Are we can get flagged for that. <laughs> Probably they're on to us. Yeah, bleep it out. <laughs> Beep, dist, <laughs> oh dist, oh dist. Oh, I love that you're bleeping out Methodist, <laughs> not the drug name. No. You're bleeping out Methodist. <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> I'm going to get flagged for saying a denomination. <laughs> Don't even start with Baptist. <laughs> Odist. Um. <laughs> <laughs> that got me. A huge pop. Bap. I'm, I'm really... Was expecting it to taste bad, <laughs> right? That's what I'm saying. It's but here's the deal. I I don't want to gloat about this. No, it is fine. Got a- I rather have Wild Turkey 101 a hundred percent. But would I like to go out there and ask for the rev like the the? Oh yeah, they got me on the marketing. Yeah, hundred percent got me. Yeah, can I get the the Smoky Reverend? Like <laughs> like I'd be like, yeah, I'd I'd like to order that cocktail and just to see. And here's the deal. Like that's gonna stand up in a cocktail. It's fine. It's ninety proof. Whatever. Yeah. It- there's a little bit of oak, not a ton of grain. No. That's what it, makes me happy about it is it's not very grainy. It's not this. I mean, it doesn't scream that I'm young. 
you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, kind of like, kind of like me. Okay, I don't scream as if I'm young. No, that's all right. We're good. We're gonna move on. This has gone very poorly. It's gone exactly how. I thought it was. Yeah, especially after your uh, afternoon nap. By afternoon, I mean evening nap. I had, uh, my wife had something tonight, and she got a babysitter. It was very kind. Um, you know, she could have just said, hey, can y'all record another night? Um, but she got a babysitter, but she told them, I never leave my house to come here until 6.30. Right. Ever before 6.30. <laughs> right. And sometimes later than that. And she goes, she was leaving. She goes, hey, the sitter's going to be here at 545. And I said, why? <laughs> she goes, so you're not late. And I go, in in what world do I need an extra 45 minutes? And right. I and, mean, in fairness, she's right. And so you I wouldn't. went and treated myself to Taco Bell. Oh. Um, and then you I love having free reign, no responsibility. <laughs> I you get to pit. to a podcast. I filled up with gas. I went to Dick's Sporting well, yeah, Goods for a minute Bell. because I called you to see, and you didn't answer. I was going to think, I could come early. Yeah, I was um, asleep. He was asleep. said, you need me? And I was like, well, I'm just out. And I go, don't worry about it. So I piddled around town. Just working on some chicken nuggets for my kids. Yeah, I went to Dick's Sporting Goods, just took a look-see at what they any, have. Did you get any ammo? <laughs> No, they don't sell ammo at Dick's. Oh, that's right. Oh, man, Dick's is woke. Yeah. Real woke. Right. You got to go to Academy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can get all the ammo at Academy. They yeah. have aisles of it. Academy, it took me about 10 minutes to walk out of there with some. What do you like, mean? I'm talking about like uh, a sidearm. Oh, yeah. Real and, quick. And, <laughs> they got the direct line to the, to the background show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. They do. They're not on dial up. They're on fiber. Yeah. Yeah. Direct line. Some of them other places. Pentagon. Yeah. You know, they go straight to the Pentagon. <laughs> it does. Don't know if that's good. Yeah. I don't know, the DOD. Tracking There's the this Greeks. Pentagon stamp. Oh, no way. It was a pentagram. Uh, that's the devil. Yeah. You went to Satan's workshop. Well, I mean, some people, when you look at the Pentagon from the air, as you're flying out of DC, they both have you five connect points. the corners. Yeah. Could get nasty. You're going from one way, it's upside down, and then it's uh, you're summoning something. Yeah. All right. Well. Um, well, we've shoot the shot the pooch in this one. We shoot the pooch. We shooted the pooches. Shot in it. this one. Um, yeah. yeah. Buy bar pass on that. Bar. I mean, it, I mean, there's, I mean, there's no way to. Pa there's no reason to pass. Bar. Here, here's the deal. I'm gonna say buy it. Yeah, it's not going to offend you by any means, and it's going to look decent on your shelf, especially unless you, if you like to read. Unless you're into pentagrams, then the reverend may offend you. Oh, that's so. No, that is true. Yeah, it, you there wanna, could be a situation where if you're a uh, satanist, yeah, well, you I, don't want the reverend. I think that there's always there's a good balance in life, like <laughs> okay. you know what I mean, like. Satanist and reverence. Yeah, you can have. Reese needs all comers. Um, let's uh, go ahead and tell people if they want to join town hall or, or virtual barn night levels of our patron. Patreon.com slash the podcast. Tonight, I told everybody, I said, be prepared to take a shot. Grab, grab oh. your favorite whiskey for a okay. shot. Yeah, let's do that. Because I said I, I wanted to get buzzed right off the top. We're doing um, these a lot more frequently. We've come up with a structure that we believe in, and people already are raving about five-star reviews um, across the nation, really. <laughs> Check it out, patreon.com <laughs> slash the podcast. You'll enjoy it. Um, we're re recentering on community in 2024 because that's what it's all about. So check it out. And we don't know Jack. But we'll drink it.